What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of HBCU Huddle. I am CJ Hurt. Follow me on the Twitter at ConRadicalness on there. Follow me on threads also. I need to get my threads count up at new underscore ConRadicalness. I'm joined by Mike Wallace. Mike, how's it going, man? Hey, it's going great, man. We're Holiday week is here. It's time. Mm-hmm. A lot of news to get to, man. A lot of stuff to get to on the HBCU Huddle front. And uh, I'm just excited about another show, man. I'm, I'm ready to go. My mic check on Twitter, Mike, yes. M-I-K-E on Twitter. Follow him over there. Are you on threads? I'm not on threads. Okay. I'm not yeah, on don't, threads, Don't man. get on it. It's a waste of time. Yeah, All of this is a waste yeah. of time. I'm Whatever. strictly uh, strictly Twitter and, and, and occasionally IG. That's about gotcha. it. That's about as far as it go for me. Got you. Got you. Like you yeah. said, Mike, we got a lot to get to. We decided to go. I know I tried to think like because I don't like doubling up on culture makers because there's yeah. so many different people uh, with their hands on the culture. I was like, did we do – Vice President Kamala Harris, she was at the Celebration Bowl. It makes sense to do her. I think if we did her, it wasn't when we did her audio. We didn't do her since we've been visual. So we'll talk some about Vice President Kamala Harris uh, in our Culture Makers segment. We've got some interesting coaching announcements for the Legacy Bowl. We've got interesting coaching announcements from around the HBCU college football landscape and so much more. Mike has a great pick six for you. Can't wait to share that with you guys. But first... Celebration Bowl has come and gone. It's over. Fam, you did it. Wasn't sure it was going to happen, Mike, but they (laughs) they did it. They did everything they could, I felt like, to give that game away, and they just couldn't give it away. They won it, much to uh, the chagrin of the Howard Bison, who came out there and competed at a a high enough level to win that game. Mike, when when you look back on it, about four or five days removed from the the actual game itself. When you look back on the Celebration Bowl, Mm -hmm. what stands out to you? The fact that we got to get this this ABC contract dispute locally with the TV providers (laughs) (laughs) over with because I was not able to watch that game in real time. I was so frustrated because it was an ABC nationally televised game. Who's your provider? Um, uh, AT&T, DirecTV. DirecTV. So DirecTV didn't do me a favor with that. I was following the Celebration Bowl through your tweets and your updates and, um, you know, obviously on on social media. So I was able to go back and see some of the highlights and those kind of things once the game was over with. Uh, But it seemed like, you know, Howard was on the verge of pulling off one of the biggest upsets that we've seen in that game. And they were right there. They were on the verge of doing what South Carolina State did to those mighty Jackson State talented teams. But they just couldn't close the door. And as you said in one of your social media posts, you know, it was just a matter of time before FAMU finally showed up and looked like FAMU with their explosive offense. And they put together back-to-back drives in that fourth quarter that basically got them into contention, got them the lead, and then got them a chance to kind of create some separation and some breathing room. And, you know, kudos to Willie Simmons, Florida A&M, for basically going wire to wire, uh, essentially uh, in the MEAC, uh, excuse me, in the SWAC, taking care of business and becoming the first SWAC team in what seems like forever. uh, Ever. No, forever. It's, It's never happened. Yeah, so it's yeah, they made history. They the made history. history. So made 20, history. 2015, I do believe we get this first celebration bowl. It took a former MEAC team and to uh, to yeah, become sound, the first SWAC team. Sound to about win right. It. All that talk about the MEAC being did after the departures of North yep. Carolina, North Carolina A and T and FAMU and Bethune Cookman, Cookman yep. and and Hampton, yeah. as well, and they still yeah. found ways to win the celebration bowl. The past two, uh, well, really, I'm talking specifically about the past two yeah right because that's when the realignment happened Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um beating if we did and maybe we do this for pick six we do a best team of the celebration bowl era yeah right where we pick our our six best teams i think even though jackson state lost both of them i think you could make a case specifically for that that second loss the, the team that uh before coach prime and shador and the rest of them leave and go to Colorado, I think you can make a case for that team being on the best teams in the celebration era list, even though they yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, but still, the MEAC found ways to win those, and it looked like the MEAC was going to find a way again to win in the celebration bowl. And I I, I hate saying this because I think Howard played a as good a game as Howard could play. Mm-hmm. But, yo, fam, you was just giving them opportunities, mm-hmm. turnovers, Bad plays offensively, missed tackles defensively. Uncharacteristic Un- stuff. Unca- yeah. It was yeah. odd. Fam, you yeah. outgained Howard by nearly 200 yards. That defense for Florida AM held the, the Bison to about 180 
or so yards in that contest. The, the offense had about 280, or excuse me, 380 yards or so of, of total offense. And still, you look up in the fourth quarter, and I do believe FAMU is trailing. They take the lead, and it's like, oh, okay, Ooh, rest a little bit. And then Howard takes it right back. It's like, what is what is <laughs> happening here? Yeah. Williams missed out. If if Williams was a bit more composed at quarterback, and I thought that Jay on the, the broadcast, first off, the broadcast team, was phenomenal. Jay yes. and Tiffany were outstanding. Yes. Yep. And he pointed out four or five times, like, hey, Williams went here, but if you look over there, that dude is running wide open uh, down the field. Yeah. Where there were, like I said, four or five missed opportunities for Howard to get a big play or a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And he just missed it. It, it seemed like uh, Florida AM defensively confused him some with the pre snap stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he just made his mind a predetermined, like, okay, yeah. this is why I see at the snap. Then I'm going this way with it. Just predetermined it. it. Only four yards per pass attempt. And that's been Howard's problem Mm -hmm. offensively all year. They've been a first read passing offense where the first read is the read I'm going to take, and they don't work the ball across the field. Their receivers aren't necessarily putting up explosive numbers. They get a lot of uh, uh, inside the box Passing, they pass to running backs a lot. Mm-hmm. They never really threaten those, down that, the field. That, those three old running backs yeah. is, are good enough to where to do you, it. You, yeah. you would want them dump to offs and that kind West of thing. West Coast offense style, where the yeah. running back is yep. super involved. Quick shoot, quick shoot offense. But um, to Jay's point, man, Jay Walker saw it from a quarterback standpoint. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an All American quarterback at, at at Howard, so yeah. I know it was kind of personal for him to be able to say, "Hey, I can see this. Somebody needs to communicate this to them." But you know, as you said, man, I mean, Howard did. Some remarkable things this year to even get themselves in that game. Uh, co-champions two seasons ago. Uh, last, excuse me, co-champions in the MIAC last season. Outright champions this season uh, in the conference. And then they went to the Celebration Bowl. So what Larry Scott is doing is just building and building and building. They'll be able to take the film from this game, go into spring practice and recruiting, and then say, okay, this is what we need to really be a fortified team in the MIAC coming back next year. Because, again, they have a chance to rival – uh, North Carolina Central, who loses a lot of talent mm-hmm. um, as the team to beat coming back in the MEAC. So, hey, you got to tip your caps to what Howard has done this year. They surprised me. They were the biggest surprise team in the uh, in black college football. Um, but, again, the team that won it probably should have won it, and it was basically a coronation for Florida A&M for a remarkable two-, three-year run under Willie Simmons. I think it was a A-minus, B-plus game from Howard in like a C game for Florida and, and talent, and they, talent and they were just yeah. so so much better than Howard. They were still able to to come out of there with a win. If you were the athletic director of Florida and M, mm-hmm. I'll put you in this situation, Mike. Put mm-hmm. you on the spot. Mm-hmm. And I've been to that office before. You you win the swag. <laughs> you win the swag. Yeah. And I come through. You find a lamp. You rub the lamp, and I pop out. I'm the magic genie in the lamp. Mm-hmm. Like okay, I'm a genie. I don't grant a whole lot of wishes. I can do one thing for you. I can put you in the FCS playoffs. Would you do that or would you go to the Celebration Bowl? In Florida A&M's case Florida for, A&M. this for this particular year, year J- this no, year for I, I would have okay. I, I would have scripted it exactly the way it played out. All right. Um because and it's not like I'm always a proponent of tr- winning it all truly going through the playoffs on a uh you know all inclusive level showing that you're the best team in the country. But for what you get for going to the Celebration Bowl, the kind of recognition Florida A&M needed uh, nationally on national TV, walking away with a million dollars, completing a, almost a perfect season, essentially. I mean, the only team that they lost to this year was South Florida, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, and they, they were in that game, you know what I mean, for a long part, long stretch. So I think this season I would have said, hey, do it the way you did it this season. They did the playoffs two years ago. And they lost in the first round. This year they got it. They needed to get that Celebration Bowl win. And now if you start stacking another one and then another one, then you're like, okay, we've done this. Is there something greater for us? But right now for FAMU, I think this is exactly what they needed. You think we need another bowl? You think we need we could do – well, I, I want to say need. Yeah. But do you think another – let's put it in – where is a, a major black metropolis? Let's put it in Dallas. Put, mm-hmm. it, in, put it in Houston. Mm-hmm. Somewhere in Texas. Mm-hmm. Do you think another bowl with – a uh, second place team in the the SWAC and either second place MEAC or you reach out to some of these HBCUs who aren't in uh, traditional HBCU conferences. Do you think that bowl could draw numbers? 
Do you that's think tough. If, that's if it tough was because Prairie View A and M and Tennessee State in Dallas, you think that would do numbers? Uh, I, I'm not sure it would. Okay. I'm not sure it would. You know, and, and and the incentive has to be there for both teams, and you have to have the kind of following. It's almost it almost has to be a strategic bowl. It can't be. It almost has to be like you know which ones are going to go to this market and make sense. It, it economically has to make sense more so than gotcha. it probably does competitively. So you got to, I mean, you know, what teams travel the most, what teams travel the strongest. You have to have a Jackson State yeah. always versus somebody from, you know, maybe, you know, somebody. A, well, I mean, we had it. It was called the uh, – it was called um, – uh, uh, the, the the game here in Memphis, man. Southern Heritage, Southern Heritage Classic. Yeah. You know, Jackson State, Tennessee State. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I, I like the idea of it. I do like if you had sort of a secondary uh, four-team kind of thing yeah. um, leading into it. But I don't know. It's, it's tough, man. Economically, it would have to make sense and it would have to sell. And I know you talked to uh, MEAC, SWAC Commissioner, excuse me, Charles McClellan, and he's talked about trying to establish more lucrative bowls for uh, HBCUs. I think there's one on the horizon – but um, it's hard to see what kind of matchup that could be. Yeah, I think that that's the Celebration Bowl. Yeah. I think that solidified itself <sighs> as one of the premier bowls in the nation. It's the only FCS bowl. It's the only non-FBS bowl, I do believe, mm-hmm. is the Celebration Bowl. And I think it has solidified itself as one of those type, one of those premier bowls, mm-hmm. right? I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's Rose Bowl or right. Fiesta Bowl right. or Chick-fil-A Bowl, right. but I'm saying it's it's a bowl that you don't mind sitting down and watching because there it's are a relevant things, bowl. it's relevant. It's there, more relevant than a lot of the FCS lower there, class bowls. There are I mean, FBS, FBS yeah. because there's something on the line, yeah. right? Yeah. And they've, the past three have been really, really good. Sure, the mm-hmm. Jackson State, South Carolina State was a blowout, but that was good because nobody saw that coming. Right. And everybody was watching it in awe. But North Carolina Central, Jackson State went yeah. to overtime. This was a one-score game, competitive yeah. game. Yeah. Um, back year and before forth. that, year before that, uh, North Carolina A and T and Alcorn State mm-hmm. last possession game. You yeah. know what I mean? Last possession. That was high scoring too, wasn't it? It was. It in was twenty nineteen. Yeah. It was. It was in the twenties, thirties. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, last possession, last play. Yeah. Type game. So, so yeah, it's compelling. It's compelling. So the thought is, all right, so now that we've got this bowl taken care of, this mm-hmm. bowl is going to be it. This bowl is doing numbers. ABC loves this. We love this. ESPN loves this. Cricket loves this. Everybody loves this. What's next? How do we take this and continue to grow it? And that'll be something for yeah. the commissioners of both the MEAC and the SWAC yeah. and, you know, the the CAA because uh, that's where Hampton is, uh, yeah, right? CAA, and then you got to uh-huh. get yep. into the OVC Big South because mm-hmm. that's where Tennessee State is. You start bringing those conferences in because they've got HBCUs in their conference mm-hmm. and try and figure out a way to incorporate more of the a- FBS HBCU There is certainly – when, when you mention it that way, uh, you know, you, you can certainly say, okay, let's uh, – we got the Celebration Bowl, right? We had – but see, then you would almost if, – if you added another bowl – you would have to uh, decentivize any eligible team from going to the FCS playoffs. Yeah. Because could you have said, all right, let's take North Carolina Central and pl- match them up with Tennessee State. Yeah. And put them in a bowl game somewhere, you know, uh, you know, somewhere somewhere decent. I mean, pick any kind of place. Let's um, do it in Charlotte. Why not? Yeah. I mean, let's, you let's, you could you could split the team. difference and yep. do it right let's there. Let's do it in Charlotte. You know what I mean? And and. Could that bowl be successful? Yes, because I think that would almost incentivize Tennessee State. If you can't win the OVC in the Big South OVC, then you still have one more game to go to recruit, to feel good, and, and, and to do those things. So it would have to be strategic. Almost, I would say they would almost have to look at that game, a secondary postseason bowl, the way they look at the MEAC SWAC Challenge at the beginning of the season. Okay. Um, and strategically align two teams. If you all are seven-win teams or, or six-win teams with a winning record, we're going to match – the best, you know, at large, you know, winning record team versus another team, and then see if they can get together and do that. Yep. And listen, it's it's all about money. Yeah. That yeah. that's the thing it's about. Uh, and I get that you want to see, you want to compete against the best, you want to get a chance to showcase your talents mm-hmm. against the the best. Um, but if you're telling North Carolina Central, I'm using them this year because mm-hmm. they went to the playoffs right. this year. You're telling them, hey, you're gonna play a damn fine team. Either way it goes. You're either going to play Richmond or you're going to play Prairie View A.M., Tennessee State, mm-hmm. uh, one of those types of teams. Hell, Jackson State, somebody like mm-hmm. that, um, and make money. You're going to have to pay 
to play Richmond, mm-hmm. but you can make money by playing one of these mm-hmm. other schools. Mm-hmm. They would absolutely say, we're, we're going to take the money. We're going to roll with, yeah. with it like that. And that's what um, Willie Simmons had to say about playing in the Celebration Bowl Versus instead the, of the, the playoffs. That's what's been point, pointed out routinely over the years. Yeah. When asked, Coach Prime pointed this out when he was in it, when asked, hey, like you, you're good enough to go to the playoffs. You would be in the playoffs. You're yeah. an 11 win team. Do you, do you feel like yeah. you're being left out? Any remorse? Any regret for doing it? No, because we couldn't use the money, and this is going to pay us in a way that the FCS playoffs and exposure aren't. And, and exposure. Yeah. And it's just us. Yeah. And right. Exposure. And we're going to get the exposure for so long. It was the it was the first bowl game. Mm-hmm. I think now it's the second. It's, Somebody yeah. kicks yeah. off at 10. I can't remember who, but still, the the Slater Bowl starts. You're in that first slate of bowl games before that first bowl ends you're kicking off and so i think that that matters as well like you said the yeah, the yeah. exposure from a student recruitment not just athlete not just football but student recruitments a chance to get on the tv and say hey look at us mm-hmm. we've got commercials on tv the mm-hmm. MEAC, the swat got commercials on tv and our schools got commercials on yeah. tv yeah uh is big when it comes to trying to get kids to enroll at your your university and then what it means for your fans as well. And not right. just your fans, but fans in general, in general alum. Right. Growing that sport. General, that, growing yeah. the sport. Growing that game. Yeah. In, in that sort of way. And we it's, talk a about, it's a, it's a great Atlanta, location. Atlanta, I don't know if there are any, if it's a better, better city yeah. in the United yeah. States than Atlanta for what this is. When you think about not just having the triangle there, think about all the other HBCUs that are close. Yeah. Tuskegee yeah. is yeah. close enough. Alabama A&M, Alabama State, mm-hmm. Savannah State. Albany State, like mm-hmm. every there, there are schools really, really close mm-hmm. to that area, and so it makes getting there a bit more it's easier. Simple. Fam, you wasn't that far. Fam, no, you was four hours, close. four hours, like, four hour drive. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and for me, four hours is close. Mm-hmm. So, if you're four hours away, that is that's a day trip. If yeah. I can go up there for a day trip, that's cool. I can go up to Sykeston right now. Go to the home of the to, to the home rolls, of the throwed rolls, throwed rolls and come on back. Lambert's Lambert. Cafe. Shout out to Lambert. Shout Cafe. out to Lambert. Yeah, well, don't yeah. shout them out. They don't sponsor us. But if you want to, we'll shout <laughs> you out, baby. Um, so, but you can do those sorts of things, and it's just it's hard for me to figure it out. Mm-hmm. What the teams would have to be for a second bowl to work, and where to put it, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. where it is matters just as much, if not more. Than the teams that you put there. Do you put it in Dallas and Houston or mm-hmm. Houston? Do you put it in Charlotte? Could Nashville do something with it? What about Memphis? Yeah. Jackson, yeah. Mississippi? Like where where would be a nice central point, a point where there's already a large black alumni, large HBCU mm-hmm. uh, alumni base and a place that people wouldn't mind traveling to in early December yeah, or late right. November, whatever that is. Right. I think those commissioners um, know that. And just from what I've heard talking to Commissioner McClellan and uh, Commissioner Stills, I think they know that and they're aware of it. And now it's just, okay, what can we, how can, can we, we do this? Right. What do we need to do to figure the out logistics, the logistics, the logistics right. yeah. of it? Yeah. Now, fam, you won. Uh, box of Row rankings came out. Final yes. Box of Row rankings. Mm-hmm. If you win the Celebration Bowl, you're the Black College Football National Champion. Number one with all of the votes sits Florida A and M <sighs> University. Mm-hmm. Number two, Benedict. Number three, North Carolina Central, followed by Howard. Virginia Union is five. Prairie View A and M is six. Alcorn State seven. Jackson State eight. And uh, uh, Coach Taylor's first year, they're eight. Virginia State nine. Fayetteville State ten. Mike, do you think it's right for Howard to be uh, four behind North Carolina Central specifically, even though they beat North Carolina Central and they're the MEAC champions? Yeah, that's that's the final, uh, uh, you know, media national media poll right there. My ballot was a little bit different from that. I didn't submit it this week for uh, for the for the show today, but yeah. I did send it to Donald. My ballot looked a little bit different. I had FAMU one. I had uh, Benedict two. North Carolina Central three. Oh, excuse me, uh, Howard 3. I had Howard 3, North Carolina Central 4. I also had Tennessee State, Jackson State uh, in the top 10. I did not have Virginia State and Fayetteville State there. Um, I I went with the best 10 that that I had. And, you know, again, Prairie View represented in the the SWAC championship game. Alcorn State uh, fought all the way down to the end of the season. Jackson State was – I think I might have had Jackson State at 9 or 10. But – I can't argue. I can't complain with any of the teams in the way that, that it showed out. You know, FAMU was the unanimous champ, um, and I don't think there's any question or any confusion there. 
But what strikes me is that you got a coaching change at number two. You got a coaching change at number seven. Um, and, you know, we'll see where, where everything else falls in line. But there's certainly – Going to be some uh, attrition when it looks when you look at the polls. I think that's going to way that's the way it ended this season. I think going into next season, it's going to look a lot different in terms of the preseason ballot. Okay, all right. I think that um, flip Howard in North Carolina Central, and I'm fine. Yeah, yeah I think flip yeah. them. I know what the records are. I know it's a big record discrepancy as well. Mm-hmm. But let's just look at what they did amongst each themselves other. Yeah, amongst each other yeah. in conference yeah. and one and you beat them by 30 one that's what I'm one saying. is in the celebration bowl because mm-hmm. they won the conference the other one is it so i think that mm-hmm. if you get to the celebration bowl and you beat the team ahead of you you should be ahead uh, of them, uh, ahead of them. Yeah. but like you mike i can't make um any too many drastic too many differences, drastic yeah. differences yeah. or anything like that it was a really fun year yeah. of yeah. black college football the uh unfortunate thing is or the fortunate thing, depending on how you look at it, uh-huh. the end of the college football season 2023, there is no letdown. There's no time to wait. It's 2024 season now. Now we got to look, a, look look ahead to next year. Already, Mike, man. Yeah. Early, early yeah. favorite to win. Celebration Bowl. Give me the two teams Ooh. who are going to the Celebration Bowl so we can clip it, we can run this commercial for all of time, and we can make sure that the world knows that this is who you said going to the Celebration and, Bowl. And both of them will go 3-8 and eight next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what will happen. You know, next year, I, I, I would say, man, it's like Howard has a lot coming back, mm-hmm. and, and I think they're just starting to build. Um, so I, I would say Howard gets back there. I think how, but see, South Carolina State made the coaching change. I think Chinnis Berry is going to instill some joy and some some not joy, but just some 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 toughness and some fresh well, listen, energy. If, I think that if Coach Berry does what he did yeah, at Benedict yeah. and what I think he can do, yeah, it they'll will be, be right joy. There. It they'll will be joy there. because they'll be winning. It, it's going to be tough. That's true. It's going to be defensive minded. Yeah, but when you win, there's joy. Yeah. Winning and joy go hand in hand. I would say right now, if you ask me today, who's going to be in the Celebration Bowl next year? I would say Howard gets back there mm. in Jackson State. Okay. I think Jackson State I, – I th- and I'll have this in my pick six in a minute, but I think Jackson State has the chance to really take advantage of some attrition and some transition, you know, in, in, in the SWAC. And, I, man, Willie Simmons is go- – it's going to be so hard for him to come back. And they lose some guys, some senior leadership. Um, they're going to still be a good team, but I think what they did this year – was like okay, this is we reached it. Now it's time to graduate to something bigger and better or different. Um, so Jackson State Howard gets to the uh, Celebration Bowl in 2024. So y'all heard Mike say it. So me at school, swag schools. Mike is hating on you already. <laughs> he is. I will say because I don't want you going out there on a limb by on myself. the limb by yourself. Yeah. I will say that it will be fam you. Okay. And assume it. This is assuming Coach Simmons. Is See, there. but that's the thing. That's why it's I couldn't do it. Coach that's why I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and I think that he he will be. I can't imagine if if somebody wanted him FBS wise, if they wanted him, I would assume they would have already gotten had, him by yeah. now. Okay. Um, now I'm not saying he wouldn't coach, wouldn't have coached in the celebration bowl. I'm not saying he wouldn't. Right. Have I know what you're saying, but the coaching cycle, but the is coaching already cycle started. has yeah. started. Yeah. So I will say, Coach Simmons mm-hmm. and uh, Morgan State. Let's go. Mm. Let's okay. Go. Let's okay. Find out. Morgan State has to get a quarterback, but if they get an offense, that defense is legit. Yep. So that's a good one. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. Um, Grambling State was not mentioned by either of us in that, but that doesn't mean Grambling isn't a great university. Doesn't have a great football program because it does a uh, historic program. Mm-hmm. They've been looking for a head coach. They found one this week, Mike and Robert Joseph. Coach Joseph was an LSU wide receivers coach from 17 to 21. He was an assistant head coach in 2021, and if you know about LSU around that time. You know that a dude named Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and a bunch of studs came through there in 2019. He was on that staff yeah, that yeah. won a national Mickey championship. Joseph, Mickey Joseph. Mickey, Mickey Joseph, Joseph, excuse yeah. me. Mm-hmm. 20 and won a uh won a championship. He was a Nebraska hit, assistant head coach in 22. He was the interim head coach in 22 after they let Scott Frost go. I think he went 3 and 6 in that span. He was a Grambling State wide receivers coach in 2014, 2015, the year before that. I, everything in me wants to say it wasn't Jackson State. He was someplace else. One of the other HBCUs before that as an assistant coach. Alcorn. I think mm-hmm. he was at Alcorn State as their receiver coach the year before that. He's got a 16 and 13 record as a head coach at both Langston and Nebraska. Mike, you like to hire? I do. Um 
I, I think, and, and I'm representing my Grambling gear I see. today because it's Mike it's, it came always, in and yeah. ran out like, no, I got to put my shirt I gotta on. Put my shirt on. I got to put my shirt on. I got. I'm, I'm juggling different hats around here, um, but I, I feel like this is a fresh start. I respected the the, the Hugh Jackson hire because of what it represented, um, but I think the Mickey Joseph hire is one where I, I think it's a little bit better of a fit. And I think he's gone through enough where he's been humbled. He obviously has some off the field issues uh, with 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 the assault case that was later dropped. So that's why his name hasn't been circulated in a lot of higher profile situations. Um, so you, you you're going to have to look beyond some of those things there uh, when it comes to that. Maybe he he's grown from that whatever that incident was. But to 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 lead Nebraska the way he led Nebraska, and then still to come back and have HBCU ties. Everything on that resume says, man, this is a good fit. This is a good fit. And, you know, he knows how to recruit uh, Power 5 talent. He knows how to encourage guys in the transfer portal. So I think he's going to be able to to do all of these things to make a quick fix. He's more of a defensive-minded guy um, in some some spots. He did offense. So he's kind of coached on both sides. And I think this is a good hire. It's an encouraging hire. I won't say it's a good hire yet. It's an encouraging hire, and we'll see where it goes from there for the Grambling State University Tigers because they have a long way to go to get back to that relevance uh, that they were under Eddie Eddie Robinson and under you know some of the Doug Williams and the coaches that came after that. He has a wealth of coaching mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. Now, not necessarily coordinator experience, but coaching collegiately. Yeah, I think he's that's been, what I'm saying. He's yeah, been he's coaching been, yeah. since 1999, collegiately started at Tulane. Mm-hmm. And so since 99. Yeah. So listen. 09, 19, 25 years, 25 years yeah. of, of coaching, been an assistant head coach and interim head coach and an actual head coach in, in that span mm-hmm. as well. He has um, ties to the SWAC, not just at Grambling, yeah. but at Alcorn as as well. Alabama State also. So he knows the region. Like he, he, he knows, knows the region. region. He's familiar yeah. with the culture yeah. of SWAC football, and that can be so important yeah. when, you, when you get one of these coaches because a lot not a lot, but some of Hugh uh, Jackson's mistakes weren't on the field. They were off the field, not understanding the importance of certain aspects of Grambling State football, Grambling right. State University. Right. right. And so you start doing things. We talked about it on this show a whole lot. You start doing things like taking G's off of helmets. <laughs> well, <now laughs> alumni are like, yo, what are you doing? Right. He's not you, authorized to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think that there's – he has – and and understanding a better understanding than Hugh Jackson did because he's been around it and been mm-hmm. in it. He played at Nebraska. I do mm-hmm. he was a quarterback at Nebraska in his time there. And now he's gonna try and take over for um Hugh Jackson and the Grambling State Tigers. They were they were trending up for a minute. A little yeah, bit. yeah, yeah. For a minute. Um, they were in contention up until, you know, once November hit. You know, they, they they were in contention for the West. They were re- never really in control of it. Yeah. Um, you know, Prairie And that's View, such a tough division to get control yeah, of. Everybody it, no, feels every, like they're yeah, the same. Yeah, it, it comes down to the last two, three weeks, yeah. every single season. So it's an encouraging hire. We'll see where it goes. Like it's an encouraging hire. Um, and you know, for everything that, that that Joseph has an opportunity to do, I think the biggest coaching story right now in, in the SWAC is what's gonna play out with your guy down there leaving the reservation. Because as much as last week we talked about, you know, Fred McNair leaving uh, Alcorn State, it's become official. Mm -hmm. They've already named his successor, his replacement. Uh, The defensive coordinator there has moved up into the head coach. And it was just like that. But Texas Southern hadn't yet announced whether Fred McNair is their coach yet. And there's some contractual negotiations that are kind of slowed, according to reports that have been out there. So – Shifting gears a little bit, did, did did Fred McNair jump a little bit too soon? It, should we be worried about that story, or do you think it's just a matter of – it's a formality that's just going to get wrapped up sooner or later? I'll tell you more. My thoughts on that on the other side, Mike. All right, cool. We'll, we'll get Great to that. Great segue. And we'll, <laughs> we'll do everything else. We'll get your pick sixes as well right here on HBCU Huddle. <laughs> what can Ja fix right now? I think the one thing that he immediately fixes – is the pace. The team gets back to being a up-tempo, 
attacking the paint pace. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. You know, it's always great playing here whenever I did play here. Coming back, it was one of the reasons why I chose to come back here. Yes! And Rose sniping the steal. Goes up against Murray and scores! I love the atmosphere. I love the arena. Fast break basketball. Roddy, love it for the air! is rocking. I want to be a part of it, so that's one of the reasons why I came. Let's go to a colorway that none of us are going to have. This picture is T. Morant's ankles. And this is, honestly, so this is like essentially the midnight shoe, but in a powder blue. We saw these in media. All three of us was like, yeah, jaw dropping. We wanted to take a picture so bad, but we couldn't do it though. But we saw, we was like, holy crap. So you've seen them in real life? They should drop these. Those are here. Give it a $500 retail price and drop them. They should. The Sneak Fest Show, live Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We're going dancing. Welcome to Fandom 101. We need you going crazy in the stands. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA Division I men's basketball first and second rounds this March in Memphis, Tennessee. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash MVB tickets. Class dismissed. Welcome back, CJ, Mike, started talking about some some coaching changes. We're on the situation at Alcorn State right now. Fred McNair, Texas Southern. Fred McNair, for those of you who don't know, his contract wasn't renewed by Alcorn State because they got word that he was going to take the Texas Southern job. And now there's a bit of a holdup with Texas Southern. Before we get to the Texas Southern side, I will... uh, Talk some about the Alcorn State side of things. Their athletic director issued this statement saying, quote, I would like to thank Coach Fred McNair for his many years of service and dedication to Alcorn State University. We work diligently to extend Coach McNair a multi-year contract, which would have placed him in the top tier of the conference with both compensation, incentives, and additional incentives for assistant coaches. Unfortunately, we could not reach a mutual agreement that is from athletic director uh, Robert Reigns. Uh, so the the thought I had initially was, and this was what was going on from the HBCU like boards and wherever you go for it, mm-hmm. the the fan perspective of HBCU news, not necessarily not credible, but not journalistic. Mm-hmm. And so the the stories that I was getting was that uh, Fred McNair sat near the bottom of the swack in compensation. And so there was a bit of frustration there. And we talked, we speculated last week about, hey, if if they don't have trainers and they didn't in 2021, I would assume that there were other things that that football program was lacking that he was trying to get and just couldn't get from administration. Recklessly speculating, just assuming, don't really know. And so that probably led to him saying, okay, I'm going to just find somebody else, somebody who's going to pay me. That statement makes it seem like they were going to try and pay mm-hmm. him. But when he was on that run where they were winning SWAC championships and going to celebration bowls, I think he was – not I think, I was told. Mm-hmm. Eighth out of the the ten, I think. And mm. now he was – he's tenth out of the, the 12. When you think about what he's accomplished, he should be compensated a bit more than that now. I haven't seen it with my eyes yet. I, I hadn't found a way to to find it. I think Alcorn State is a, a private institution, so they don't necessarily. No, it's public. It's, it's public. public. Yeah, then it's I should public. be able to find it. It's public. Well, I'll find it one of these days mm-hmm. and, and try and uh, confirm it. But that's that's just the the word on the street, rumor from your, your boy Man Man and the rest yeah. of them, right? Yeah. Um, so now, Texas Southern, you think they jump to have a coach like Coach McNair in the, in the program in the ranks that – absolutely catapults them to where they want to be in the SWAC, which is in contention for a SWAC West title and a trip to a SWAC championship game. I don't know what the holdup is, Mm -hmm. and the fear I have now is 
Coach McNair might be jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire where it's hot over here and it's still hot over there as well. You don't ever want to count your chickens before they hatch. Uh, maybe Coach McNair, I'm just trying to pit, get into his frame of mind. Seems like an honorable guy. The extension comes, and maybe he's like, hold up. Before y'all do that, just know if this Texas Southern thing works, and I think it will, I'm, I'm going to be out of here. And then upon getting that information, Alcorn State said, yeah, you know what, then we, we just won't offer you the the extension if you're not going to sign it he's like okay cool we'll just be done here and part ways so he may have parted ways before it was time for him to do because he just didn't want to take the extension knowing that he was going to leave and he trusts texas southern to get it right i I would assume all of this gets worked out is my my main thought mike that everything gets worked out and coach mcnair will be coaching over at texas southern to start the 2024 season and and that's that's a very reasonable you know, way to look at it, CJ, is very respectable, above board, you know, cooler heads prevail, everything is going to be okay, just didn't work out here, it's time to move on, right? right. I mean, that's the sanitized way to look at it. I prefer the petty. <laughs> I prefer the pettier picture. Let's go. That seems to be unfolding behind the scenes there. Um, I have contacts at, 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 at both schools, um, not as strong as they were, you know, years ago. Um, I used to be real close with the Alcorn State athletic director who's no longer there. But when he was there, I knew some of the issues that were hurting that football program. Staffing, in terms of support staff, you talked about that. Mm-hmm. Training staff, uh, uh, media relations staff. You know, I mean, like what, what Fred McNair has had to deal with year after year after year did not align with the success that he was turning around. And it seems like, and I know he felt like it, they took him for granted yeah. because his brothers played there, his family legacy is there, and we don't have to do much because he's always going to want to be here. Now, that's hard to do when new administration keeps coming in. Yeah. And you're thinking, okay, he's just going to always be here, so let's not respect him the way that he did. I do find it hard to believe that only two other coaches were paid less than him. I mean, when I'm, I'm just mathematically looking at it. Automatically uh, – uh, Mississippi Valley State is below. I know that for a fact. Um, I would also believe. I mean, Bethune Cookman is probably below that. That, that was that was the two I was. That, yeah. that's the two I was so. Um, it, it's it's you know, and, and maybe even maybe even Arkansas Pine Bluff. Okay. Um, but but I I would say from what my understanding is, McNair was sort of in that medium range. Now, having said that. Several other schools have made coaching changes, mm-hmm. and the economy and inflation has inflated some salaries where his was stuck in terms of a long-term contract. He should be one of the top two paid coaches in the SWAC. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Willie Simmons, one. Jackson State, two. And then McNair should be no lower, no lower than third. No lower than third. Now, I know the Alabama schools can do some things with their boards. There's some money um, in terms of their, their, their boards and their connections at Alabama and and Alabama State. But he should, he should definitely be top tier. He should have already been in top tier. Yeah. Like, so for this statement to come out and say the contract that they are offering him would make him a top tier coach. Right. That should have already been in that, the case. That lets you know right there. He was Right now he's not. He's, he, he wasn't. He, he wasn't. The now it's thing, just, hey, how far yeah. down is he? The second thing is – I don't believe I've ever seen a statement come from a university, a public university, acknowledging that a contract dispute was the reason why this coach is no longer there, right? So it's almost like they chose to say, okay, before this, I'm going to get my say out there, yeah, and I'm going to kind of undermine them. You don't want us? Well, we don't want you. Right. And then as soon as they put that statement out, the next day they hire a guy. So even if Fred wanted to change his mind and come back, it would look like, okay, we moved on. We don't need you. Right. So – the way that Alcorn is playing this, I can see why Fred McNair felt like, all right, as soon as I can get out of here, I can. Now, what you don't hope is that a guy with that kind of resume and that kind of pedigree didn't overplay his hand. And now Texas Southern, from my understanding, and I've read the same, some of the same stuff you read, you keep hearing, you know, the uh, Andre Johnson is inter- in- interested in the job. The you know? celebrity coaches, the Andre celebrity Johnson. Co- and he Ed played Reed, for the Houston Texans. Ed Reed, I think, is Yeah, has Ed Reed is out. another guy who's yeah. reached out. So can we make a Dion type splash? And we're in Houston. Yep. We know it's going to resonate. We can be the new Jackson State in terms of relevancy. And we got a Hall of Famer who says he's interested in a job in Andre Johnson, Hall of Famer wide receiver. So it's 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 one of those things where <clears throat> if you're Fred McNair, you might have got caught in a bad spot. 
I do hope Alcorn State, I mean, excuse me, I do hope Texas Southern plays this the right way, gives the man what he respects, because once the job starts, he's already recruited that area, he already knows that division, he's already a winner, he's everything you would want. And if he has to sit this one out and wait for the next cycle, then he'll be the number one candidate at whatever happens at any of the HBCUs um, moving um, forward. Um, immediately. 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 Yeah. yeah. If he yeah. is available. There's some hot seats if, for some guys that imme- just warmed up. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. If dudes are because if Gramlin down, had known, if yeah. Gramlin had known that, t- that he was willing to leave, if Southern had known he was willing to leave, if South Carolina State had known he was mm-hmm. willing to leave, he would have had his pick of all three of those schools. But it's just the timing of it was, was what, what kind of got messed up. There are dudes whose seats are pretty comfortable right now. Mm-hmm. And the second McNair, the second that Texas Southern doesn't hire McNair, and I still think that they will. They should, and they will, and yeah. I, I think that they will. But the if it doesn't happen, immediately their seats get hot. Right. Immediately seats at Alabama State get hot. Seats at Alabama A&M start warming up up immediately if you think oh we might be able to get this guy yeah morgan state right those those types of seats yep. start warming up because he's just that good of a, 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 coach. a coach yeah yeah um and it's i don't think with the exception of uh alabama a&m right now the schools that i named i don't think their coaches are under any sort of pressure we'll find out what you think yeah in our our pick six here in a, in a moment mike but i i think that him being available with the credentials and the accolades that he has, immediately you're thinking, can we get him? What's yeah. our coach done? Our yeah. coach has eight wins, yeah, but yeah. he hadn't won uh, a conference yet. McNair is out there. Can we? He did that yeah. at Alcorn, and mm-hmm. we know what Alcorn was struggling mm-hmm. with. We know we know our program is a bit better run than that. Yeah. So yeah. imagine what he could do here with our resources. Yeah, sorry, you you got to go seven eight win coach. You, you got to go. We got to get McNair in here. So this this will be interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, that there was rumors that Texas Southern was going to go the celebrity coach route from as far back as like October November. I do believe Andre Johnson being the guy who been linked to them the, the most. most. Yeah, but if it's Andre Johnson and uh, anybody not McNair, I think yo go ahead and do it. Go mm-hmm. and do it. Give him an opportunity mm-hmm. and see mm-hmm. what your program can do with that sort of mm-hmm. uh, player, a Hall of Famer that, like you pointed out, high level NFL player, somebody yeah. coming in, kind of like Eddie George, Eddie at Tennessee George State. at Tennessee yeah, State, absolutely to to coach. But if Fred McNair is available, you don't yeah. you don't do that. Fred McNair is available and wants to come. Yeah, you yeah. You, you hire yeah. coach Coach McNair, man. I hope I hope so. I hope so. We both like Fred McNair. He's a friend of the show. He's our favorite coach in the SWAC. And uh, I, I hope he has a presence one way or another somewhere in the SWAG next year. I hope we see him at SWAG Media Day come July, uh, ready to lead a new program. As a coach, not as a podcaster, because I don't know. If he <laughs> Legacy Bowl coaches were announced, Mike. Yeah. You got Coach Barry and Coach Simmons on the uh, Team Robinson side. You got da- uh, Dr. Alvin Parker and Coach Scott on the Team Gaither side. This game will take place at Yeoman Stadium in Tulane. Uh, on mm-hmm. Saturday, February 24th, 2024, kickoff at 3 on NFL Network. Over 100 players or about 100 players have been invited to participate in this game. And for those of you who don't, who might not remember, this is new. This is relatively new. I think two or three years old. Mm-hmm. And it, it comes about after the 2020 NFL draft, I do believe, when no HBCU players were taken. And it was, okay, we've got to find a way to put this talent in mm-hmm. front of NFL scouts because we have players who should absolutely be are right. good enough to be right. drafted and good enough to play in the NFL. Was started off as a complaint, then morphed into an idea, then they executed the idea, and now it is back. So shout out to them. Just wanted to make a quick mention yeah. about that. And now, Mike, let's get to your pick six. Mike's pick six this week. Six HBCU programs that enter 2024 facing put up or shut up time. Hey. Hey, it is what it is, right? It, it is what it, <laughs> it is. Hey, Mike, and that's all it's going to be. That's, it is what it is, and, and that's, that's all, all it's going to be, baby. Yeah, and it really all it ever was. That, I mean, come <laughs> you know on. And, uh, you know, basically what that means and the inspiration to that is, you know, there's a, been a lot of teams in HBCU ranks that have been sort of good. The expectations are high. The fan base is expecting championship or not or, or bust. And they're paying. The, the fan base is, is, is kind of – uh, unsettled right now, um, the performance is underachieved and all those kind of things. So I got six. And we typically, uh, you know, unveil them one through six. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the way we'll do it. But I think to me, number one on that list, Alabama A&M. So you did – well, Mike, we yeah. got to figure this out because we did it inverse. 
Oh, we did it six to one. Kyra. All right, okay. See, I yeah, was see, assuming. Kyra, Kyra she was is ready. Mike's fault. She, she was, was ready. ready, Mike. And she Kyra said, be mad at Mike. <laughs> and you know what? You know what's funny about that? I've heard like that same inflection. I don't know if the the listeners can hear. <laughs> no, what they she can't. Said. They can't but hear. But she said, goodness. "Oh, Michael. <laughs> oh my God, I got flashbacks. That was my grandmama." That was my wife. That was like, oh, man, that, like that level of how it was said. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So let me reverse that. Then. Let's start at six. Let's start, Let's at, start six. at six. Shout out. By the way, shout out, Kyra. Shout out, Delaware State. She's yes. down there yes. directing this. A proud Delaware State alum. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to uh, Kyra and Delaware State. And my apologies <laughs> for that. Uh, six, Grambling State University right here. I'm going to go Grambling State at six because, again, Mickey Joseph gets the job. When you fire a guy after only two seasons, something horrible went – like, it went wrong. It went wrong, especially a guy with the name recognition of a Hugh Jackson. I was never in favor of that hire from that standpoint. And then when he got started, I didn't like some of the things he did. I think he made it too much about him. So, regardless, whether it was Hugh or whether it was Grambling, somebody made a big mistake. And now when you make a mistake like that and now you're hiring, this hire better work. Mm -hmm. So it's put up or shut up time coming in the door for Mickey Joseph at Grambling State. So that's number six. Number five, Jackson State. I just told really? you. I just told you that they need to be in a celebration bowl next year, right? You can't have down years at Jackson State mm -hmm. with that kind of support, with that kind of vocal fan base, with that kind of uh, uh, administration. That and, and again, you just resign. Okay, new president takes over, right? Yep. They just got a new president. You just resigned Ashley Robinson as, as your AD who was linked to Dion for getting Dion in there. He's, I mean, he knows what it's like to ride high. Game day coming to campus and all of those things. So that set another bar. Even though Dion is not there, Jackson State has seen the mountaintop when it comes to relevance, when it comes to winning, when it comes to all of those things. And T.C. Taylor is a homegrown guy. He's been there. He played there. But it's put up a shut-up time for Jackson State because this year was sort of a, 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 a okay, filling-out year. They went 7-4. But they lost to Alcorn State. Yeah, they lost some home games that they probably shouldn't have lost, and now they got to get back to okay, let's get this thing the way that we need to do because we can't have too many years of being irrelevant and then losing the biggest rivalry game, no. right? So uh, TC Taylor, I think he's going to do a remarkable job. I got them going to the Celebration Bowl next year, but it's put up a shut up time already. It got there early. Number four, Virginia Union. Do you want to be a great black college team in the CIAA? Or do you want to be a great team just at Division II? Like, can you take that next step? Mm -hmm. Can you can you say, okay, look, it's time that we, you know, emerge away from Virginia State. It's time we emerge away from Bowie State. Both of those teams are going through some transitions. It's your time to take over that league and show that, hey, we're not just going to be a good regular season team. Now it's time for us to take the next step. And I think Virginia Union is capable of doing that in Richmond. But it's time for them to show it. I think they're they're in a put up or shut up situation right now because again, Benedict is 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 we've seen it. We've seen Benedict go on that kind of run where they basically undefeated, get into the playoffs. I think Virginia Union had needs a chance. Bowie State did it, Benedict did it, and now it's time for Virginia Union to do it as well. Before you get going to yep. your your top three, Mike, yep. mm -hmm. on Grambling State. Quick question about all three of these schools. Yep. Uh, on Grambling State. When you look at the Hugh Jackson hire, mm -hmm. do you think of him more as one of the celebrity coaching hires or as like a a hit coaching hire? No, I don't. I don't look at him as a celebrity okay. coaching hire. Um, he just doesn't resonate because he didn't play at the level where we gotcha. would recognize him as an NFL guy. So, nah, he he was more of a strategic hire. Gotcha. He served his apprenticeship under uh, Eddie George at Tennessee State, and he was supposed to be ready to come over and take over. But again, he thought his resume. Uh, spoke for itself, and you still got to go out there and do the work. I mean, I don't he, think he, did he the was work. he was an NFL coach. Yeah, and there, not there a are, great one, there, but he was there, one. There, are not many who got to who get that moniker, and then who come and coach at the HBCU level. Jackson State, mm -hmm. seven and four this year in his first that ain't good first enough. year, not good enough. I mean, that's good enough for this year. Completely new roster, as, but that's as that's, well. that's that's college football. Okay, right? so it's it's almost like the Deion Sanders thing. You can't get midway through your season. Talk all that stuff at the beginning of the season. I got my guys in here. We re we coming. We coming. We here. And then when you start losing games, well, I have 
60 new guys. But, You're going to always have new guys with this new transfer report. But Coach T.C. Taylor didn't come in that way, right? He, he no, was he didn't come in he was, hot. He was, he he was different than Prime in that, yeah. especially when we talked to him at media yeah. day. Yeah. It was, hey, I've got a lot. Of, i got a completely new team. Yeah. i yeah. I got a completely new staff. He was so dealt he, that hand he, as opposed to dealing that hand. Yeah, right. and so right. I think the difference in the two, if we're going to compare what the way that Coach Sanders did things and Coach Taylor yeah. did things is – Prime wanted you to believe that he had mm-hmm. Louis bags. His Louis was good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then midway through the season, when we realized, oh, that offensive ain't line got ain't isn't got good. Yeah. I don't. I got. To, I don't got enough. I got to get out there yeah. and recruit. Yeah. Versus CC Taylor, who was like, hey, we might have to figure some things out. But once we figure it out, we'll be we'll be okay. But We've got the, talent. That's the curse of following the guy who okay. was the guy. So I'm not saying this is deserved, gotcha. but but. Based on the pressure from the fan base and the expectation, he's got to step right in and deliver. Seven and four is good year one. He can't go seven and four again and lose to Alcorn State. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Virgi- All right, so, Virginia yeah. Union, mm-hmm. I think you're spot on with mm-hmm. with them. With them, um, before the coaching change, I think you could have put Benedict in this as well. Mm-hmm. Not saying that coaches are on hot seats or anything less than blah is a disappointment. But when you have been pretty good to great in mm-hmm. your conference, the next thing you need to do at the D2 level is win some some postseason games. Mm-hmm. And I think it's time for Virginia Union next year to start while you think about, okay, we got to beat our rival. You, you've always got to beat Virginia State. You got to. You right. always have right. to do that. Right. You always want to be the best HBCU in the Virginia, West Virginia, yep. DMV area, right? So you want to be better than West Virginia State. Mm-hmm. You want to be better than Bowie State. Absolutely, you want to beat those schools and be yep. better than them. But you also got to say, okay, so once we do that, the other thing we need to do, win a couple of postseason games. and that, or, or get there. Get, get they to have the postseason. They have to get there, yeah. right? Like I said, Benedict broke through and got there. Yeah. Um, Bowie State broke through, got there, and won and a won. round. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think Virginia Union is capable of doing that. That's why they're there. So that was my first three. All right, Kyle, now, let's go to the next three. Yep, my top three. Top three. My Number top three. three. Number three. It gets hot right now. Tennessee State. Yep. Tennessee State. Yep. Eddie George, four years in now, got incrementally better each year. And now he's got. Now this is the year where you say, okay, we have to win a. We have to be in contention for a Big South OVC championship the last week of the season. Mm-hmm. You got to get to eight, nine wins this mm-hmm. year. I'm not saying Tennessee State is going to get rid of Eddie George. I don't think that that's. I don't think they would do that. Um, I think he walks away from the job when he's ready. He yeah. certainly doesn't need the job. But there's a level of apathy that I see creeping into that fan base now when it comes to football that I don't recognize. Um, they've had worse seasons that got supported a lot more than what this season got supported in last season. So I think he needs to take he needs to spark another level of energy into the program. I think he's hot on the recruiting trail with some some pretty recognizable uh, uh, transfer portal type guys, and I want to see him be able to take that next step. But this is going to be a, a put up or shut up year for sure if he continues to build. It's only one more place to go, and that's into the playoff contention level. Uh, conference championship contention level for uh, Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. Number two. Number two. Dawson Odoms and Norfolk State. Oh, okay. The moment when, if this goes belly up for Fred McNair mm-hmm. at Alcorn State and he doesn't get Texas Southern, Dawson Odoms and Norfolk State, I think they're in trouble. He's He might be in trouble because he hasn't had the kind of results that w- were expected when he left Southern to mm-hmm. go take the, the, the grass is greener on the other side. Um, he was kind of edged out of Southern when he left there three years ago, but his first three years at Norfolk State hadn't really – I mean, they, they they haven't even really been competitive. You Five know, and ten in conference. Five yeah, and ten and in conference, 11 and 23 overall. Yeah, that's not that's not going to get it done. So that's the next gym job right there waiting. And I'm saying gym as in G, J-E-M. Uh, and, and I could definitely see a McNair going up there and doing his thing if it, if it goes belly up for Texas Southern. I could see a couple of other different you know people taking over in that Virginia area uh, and doing a, a nice job at Norfolk State. I love Dawson Odoms, but I think it's put up or shut up time for him. 53-16 and 16 in the SWAC. Leaves the SWAC. Uh, starts the 2021 season at Norfolk State. 2-3, um, 2021. 2-3, 2022. 1-4 this year. Yeah. His overall records in that span, 6-5, 2-9, 3-8. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. No, that's not going to get. That's it done. not going to get it done anyway. Not not when you're looking at Hampton, who's transitioned to a different conference. You know, not when you look at Virginia Union, Virginia State, those teams on a Division Two level that are getting things done, and you're recruiting against them. 
You have the best facilities of all those teams, the biggest facilities. Dick Price, Dick Price Stadium was a beautiful place. They have the biggest uh, enrollment. They have to be able to get it done, especially in a down me. When I say down, I mean just in terms of teams and yeah. numbers. Uh, yeah. Just wins this year over Hampton, won at Hampton, at Townsend, beat Delaware State at home. Suck it, Kyra. All right, number one. <laughs> Number one, uh, and, and and before I got my redo, I said it, I, I let the cat out of the bag. Alabama A&M, Connell Maynard, man. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, hey, you talk a great game. We see it. We, we love we love the energy you bring. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 you've you galvanized that community. But, you know, Huntsville, Alabama is a sleeping giant ready to support and ready to blow that university to the next level when it comes to what they're capable of doing. I think that did we see like they led the na- they led black HBCUs in homecoming attendance, right? Yeah. So yeah. that that's there. Alabama A and M in Huntsville. Mm-hmm. They have a very, very proud, strong middle class support system there, um, with a lot of graduates and, and, and people who want to see this program thrive. You had a record setting quarterback two years ago, couldn't get it done. You're rebuilding, you had some transfers last year, couldn't get it done. And now you're not even beating the teams that you know, you're supposed to be beating. Like, other teams in the SWAC are passing you by now. And Connell Maynard, I think his back is up against the wall. Alabama and m has to get it turned around. It won't be easy. But I think that's the number one HBCU who is in or which is in a put-up or shut-up time going into 2024. I agree with your top three. Mm-hmm. I think the top I, – I, those will be my top three. Okay. Um, Alabama a and m 7-3, so they undefeated in the spring – win the Black College Football National Championship in 2020. Then they go 7-3 and three the following year. Remember, that was the year that they were ranked number one coming into the season. Mm-hmm. Akil Glass, you brought him up, Black College Football Player of the Year. Back-to-back years, maybe even three years. I can't remember. I, mm-hmm. I, I know certainly. Setting. Black, Mediac record setting back, quarterback. Back-to-back. Swack record setting and, quarterback. And then they just get waxed yeah. by Jackson State. But they still end the season 7-3. and three. Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, they'll they'll get some things figured out. They go 4-7. and seven. In 2022, and then last year, five and six. So they've got back to back losing records after having what looked like the launching pad cleared for yep. takeoff or what they, they could be. I think that mine would include Tuskegee. Uh, I had them as an honor. I had them as the next one down. If Benedict gone is uh, Coach Barry from, from Benedict gone is the guy who, another guy who helped them, uh, them being Benedict. Build a a SEAC power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is that's your title. That's Can't what you you've been. You that's what you've yeah. been historically. Tuskegee mm-hmm. is that. Mm-hmm. So now it's time for you to get back to that. It feels like the the biggest, baddest in the conference has taken a step back towards everybody else. Feels like it should be time for you to jump up and reclaim the the conference as as your own by mm-hmm. beating. Not just the teams you're supposed to beat, the Mileses, the Kentucky States, the mm-hmm. the lanes of, of the world, but you've got to beat Benedict. You got to beat Fayetteville State. Got to beat Albany State. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to beat Edward Waters, right? Yeah, especially like, at home. At home, yeah. homecoming. Well, I didn't put I didn't put Tuskegee. Tuskegee was right there, but I gave him a little bit of grace because you're only one year in as a head coach in this situation, you. right? And you're allowed a, 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 a red shirt year as a coach. The okay. same reason why I gave T.C. Taylor. But I did put Jackson State on yeah. there because of the program expectation. And I can see where you see some similarity in terms of where that is. But, you know, again, Tuskegee is is not too far removed from having some glory days. And, and they seem to be on an upward trajectory. Change coaches. And now some a couple of embarrassing losses in there. But they were still right there. So I think, I think it's going to – they have a chance to turn it around. Um, but other ones have some questions. But yeah, I mean, those are those are my six, man. And um, I, I'm certain, like I said, I'll put Tuskegee as an honorable mention right there. But uh, but again, yeah, my six: Alabama A&M, Norfolk State, Tennessee State, Virginia Union, Jackson State, and Grambling State. All many of them are tradition-rich programs. It's time to turn the corner. Culture maker time, Mike. Okay, we get out of here. Yep. Uh, Kamala Harris. 27th DA of San Francisco, 32nd Attorney General of California. I don't know if you heard of her. First woman vice president, current vice president of the United States right now. Howard Class of 1986 is our culture maker. She made an appearance at the Celebration Bowl. She was on the the broadcast. It was great seeing her and and Jay do the HU call. And then afterwards, she went off to a a black-owned establishment 
grabbed her something to eat right there at Busy Bees right there in, in Atlanta, Georgia, getting herself oh, something to eat. Oh, she got her the, pl- the white plastic bag, yeah. too, boy. Yeah. When's the last time you seen a vice president come out with the styrofoam and the white plastic bag? Boy, that's wonderful, man. man. It was yes, yes. It was really, really fun to see her there and the buzz around her uh, being at the Celebration Bowl, adding to a long list of celebrities and noted people at that that game. I, again, I thought the interview with uh, Jay and Tiffany was Tiffany, outstanding yeah. where she, she talks about what Howard taught her and how it prepared her for the world. And she's out there doing big things. I think she's going to be um, in charge of messaging for the uh, female reproductive rights arm of uh, President President Biden's campaign now. So she's out on the, the trail right now championing mm-hmm. that. And, and seeing her um, reminds us, like Barack Obama, first black president, hands down, great. Mm-hmm. She's the first HBCU vice president, though. Yeah. Like she, she's yeah. she's of of yeah. us in a way that Barack isn't not knocking. No, I know what you're Obama, saying. Yeah, but like there's right. like right. oh, you can look at her and be like, hey, I went to yeah, yeah. Norfolk. She kicked it on the yard. She kicked, she kicked, it, on the she yard. kicked yeah. it on the yard with us. She was on the hill. She right, went to the right, cab right. for fried she chicken was, Friday yeah. or Wednesday yeah. or whatever y'all had it. Whenever the fried chicken day was, yeah. Yeah. And you had to get dressed up to go to the calf. She was on the she hill. She was there. She was, she was on the set. She was on the set. She was on the on the bar. I can't on remember. A, yeah. We she was going to the kickback, Mike. That's where she was at. Eighty six wasn't that long ago. No, man. Like I'm saying like that was in my in my lifetime. So I know uh, what that's like. And and she was in D.C. I know Howard. Like mm-hmm. my daughter graduated from Howard. I grew up right around the corner from Howard. And and to see her embrace the opportunity, she did the same thing with um, uh, was it Howard's men's basketball, basketball team? team in the tournament? In the yes, tournament sir. when they took a loss, she showed up for her alma mater, Kansas. She yeah. did it. She did it here with the uh, with the football program. She was at the uh, the first game. Uh, last season, mm-hmm. you know, the opening game of last season uh, for Howard University. So she's definitely represented her alma mater. Um, she's a beacon for HBCUs. There's a lot of well performed. I mean, there's a lot of everyday human beings who are great people mm-hmm. who come from HBCUs. But we also have a lot of people who elevated to the top of their professions yeah. uh, coming out of our schools, too. And, and we look at uh, Vice President Harris and say, hey, look, she's one of us. She had the le- the black leather jacket yep. coming out with the with the with the take out the, the the carry out bag. Can we go? Can we throw that video back you know up? What I'm saying because hey. it's, it's her <laughs> husband in the background is great. Also, oh uh, yeah, yeah. His, the the his husband in the background. Real <laughs> stiff, though. Like the collar, like he's come on, man. Like come on, man. Throw on a. Uh, but if we can't get to the video, it's, it's oh here it is. Cool. Yeah, here, you got to give it, it time, Mike. We got now we hiring a too. Now, yeah, now hiring. Now hiring. Yeah. Scan to apply. Now look at this. Secret Service is everywhere. Yeah. Secret Service yeah. making sure she's she's good to go. She's set. And my man right there in the back, uh, over her right shoulder. Oh no, there okay, that's is. her husband. Okay, that's her husband the right guy. there. Yeah. Oh, he got a bag too. Yeah. He of course he got he a bag. Now, now, now here we go. I know we got to get out of here. I know we. Yeah, gotta we got we got to go because what has to happen though? What we got to do, man? We can't let that clip play. Without speculating, wildly speculating, recklessly, recklessly so, what did they order? What's in that bag? Oh, I have to pull up the Busy Bee menu. All right, let's do it. <laughs> because, because I wanted to see. You know what? It would have been funny if she would have looked back as she walked out and she would have said, "Damn, I forgot my hot sauce." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can one of y'all go grab me some hot sauce? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me get some hot sauce for these, man. Man, man, need the hot sauce with the chitlin. If she said something about some chitlins, <laughs> I'd have been like, oh. <laughs> All right, first. My All guess. right. VP? My guess. I see you. Kamala Harris ordered the oxtails, oxtails. with the macaroni and cheese. All right. So we're <laughs> so this is, I'm looking at Wednesday specials right now. How do I get to Just where? go Wednesday. Just go Wednesday. Just go Wednesday. Just go Wednesday. Just go Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday so Wednesday. The special, you can get the the baked chicken quarter with uh-huh. gravy. Uh-huh. Um, you can get the baked chicken with cornbread dressing. Okay. Barbecue ribs, chicken and waffles. That's mine. She Ooh. went chicken and waffles. Ooh. You get half fried chicken, so they give you breast thigh yeah. leg yeah. wing. You uh-huh. get that. Only $23. Hmm. I might need to go there. Yeah. You get fried wings. You get two-piece fried chicken. Um, pork chops. Doesn't strike me as a pork chop person. Baked fish. It's either baked. It's see, either baked see. fish or the chicken and waffles. Ah. Fried see. shrimp. Fried catfish. Fri- fried shrimp and fried catfish. <laughs> the combo. Fried whitening. <laughs> you always just go with the veggie plate, and your sides are baked beans. Uh huh. And the baked beans. It might be a vegetable, but of course it contains meat. <laughs> Got baked macaroni and cheese. Oh, they said meat. They yeah. say it contains pork. 
Oh, you don't know nothing about carrot souffle, Kyra? Oh, no. You don't know nothing about carrot souffle? Kyra pulled up the menu back there. Yeah, there carrot souffle, man. You can get hey, that, sir, get that put, at the Piccadilly we, also. We got to put their order together, though, man. I think I think Mr. Vice President, <laughs> Mr. Vice President, yes. uh, had to go with the uh, with, with, with the baked fish, right? Yeah. And, and the carrot souffle, probably, right? Yes. And he went with the unsweet tea. Yeah, I, I don't even know if they got unsweet tea, but he they probably, probably said, they probably hey, let me don't. get the unsweet tea. And they just watered it down for him. <laughs> uh, and he got potato salad. He definitely got potato salad. And I think uh, v- Vice President, I think she went with fried okra. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, yeah. And I think she went with uh, uh, broccoli and cheese casserole. I think okay. she did those okay. two. And I think that she went with the. Did you say he went fried catfish? No, no, I said he went. I think she went baked. I think she went. I think she went fried. You think? She, I think okay. he went baked. She went yeah, fried. Yeah, you got to You got to go fried. You got to walk. If you're walking out of that and you got the plastic bag, you got to have something fried. Yeah, yeah. Something's got to be fried. Something fried and make sure the hot sauce is in there. Mike. Make sure the hot sauce is in there and and and, and the tea got some lemon. Kyra is animate that the hot sauce has got to be in there. Kyra has never spoken in our ear this much ever during the show. She wants to talk now, boy. Oh, good. You got to get to Busy B next time, man. Yeah, absolutely. Busy B, we're coming for you. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, Tune in. Well, no, don't tune in next week. We're off next week. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you for hanging out with us. We'll have more great news from the HBCU landscape and culture coming up in 2024. So for Mike, I'm CJ. We'll talk to you then.